Hey gang, what's going on? Something on this bike really, really sucks. I'm gonna tell you all about it. You may already know if you own a Ninja 300, Z300, Z400, Ninja 400, R3, MT-03, all those bikes are plagued by the same problems that we are gonna solve for you in this episode of TST Garage. Here in front of me, I have a brand new Zero Miles Ninja 400. It's a 2020 white. We've already started taking it apart to convert it into one of our race bikes. One of the things we like to do when we convert a bike into a race bike is to have pit performance parts help us work on this bike later on down the line. If you've ever taken off the real wheel of any of the bikes that I just mentioned, you know that the internal components meant for adjusting the chain just puke all over you and then you need like seven robots and three guys to help you put it all back together properly or you have to juggle all these things so they just stay in place just so as you're putting the rear wheel and axle through. So that's one of the problems we're gonna solve for you. We have come out with nice GP lifter captive chain adjuster sets for all these bikes. They do differ quite a bit from the Ninja 300 Z300 kit to the kit for this bike and the Z400. And also the R3 has all different parts from what you see here. The installation method is actually exactly the same. So we're pretty much gonna capture one installation flow so you guys can follow on any of those bikes with you know just the slight nuances that we'll point out in the parts and how they look. What I'm holding here is a raw version. These actually come in black anodized as you'll spot on our other race bikes. So this is not a production version, but this is nicer to capture on video against all these black parts so we can show you the detail. All right, let's talk about the other problem that this solves. These bikes come with a very thin steel swing arm. When you have this type of a spool for lifting purposes only attached to the swing arm, when you go down on the right side, chances are good old exhaust is gonna take the hit. But on the other side, even in the low side, you can actually put enough moment on this spool to bend your swing arm. Now, the Kawasaki ones are not as prone to this damage as the Yamaha ones. We've actually bent the Yamaha R3 MT-03 swing arm multiple times. So we no longer use the spools. Uh, we use this setup that has the reverse mechanism. So instead of the fork to capture the spool being on the stand, and the spool being here, it's basically the reverse of it. It's called a GP lifter. Now, the GP lifter actually holds this entire mechanism together and makes all these caps and internal parts captive. I'll show you how that works. This is a very, very simple and straightforward installation. It'll work exactly the same on all the bikes I mentioned. So let's get going with that. All right, guys, let's do a quick rundown of the actual parts, and then we'll get to the good part of wrenching. All right. Here in front of me, we have the two different setups. This is the Yamaha setup. This is the Kawasaki setup. For the 300 version, this comes out and it's replaced by a longer bolt with a nut. That's all it is. I'll show you how that goes together once we start wrenching. All right, on the Yamaha, the difference is really just in the shape of the parts. These are adapted so that they fit the Yamaha parts. And these are for Kawasaki. You'll see a straight spring here this spring keeps your actual axle receiver inside the swing arm at the distance that it has been preset to so that in a change of a wheel you'll always have it in the same place that you left it nothing falls out everything's still in the same place you take the axle out you take the wheel out you put it back in everything's still where it was this is what we're after now on the kawasaki we needed to go with a conical spring because at the ultimate extension of a uh, wheelbase, we had coil bind in straight spring. So we decided to go with a conical that collapses into itself and thereby you can achieve the entire range of adjustment in the wheelbase in the swing arm. For the Yamaha, we also have a separate component that is able to be placed here. Obviously the fasteners go over that and through. And this is made of Delrin so this is a sliding component that has a really broad area. Again, on the Yamaha, 
that swing arm is basically paper thin and it's so easy to damage it. So we wanted to have an, a large surface area component made of a consumable plastic that hits, grinds away, and protects the rest of the parts. We highly recommend getting this set up with the slider, but we've also seen guys have success without it. It's really up to you. All right, as I said, when you take the wheel off, everything just pukes out, and uh, this just is really for the purpose of handling that problem and keeping everything in place. You still have the issue of your wheel spacers popping out, so we do produce these captive wheel spacers that have a lip, they bite into the oil seal around the bearing, and they stay in place. So then you really only have to track the brake carrier, and I also have a pretty nice um, method for that that makes it stay put. So I'll show you that when we start wrenching. This is pretty much it for the presentation portion. Let's grab some tools and let's rip this thing down. All right, first step, if you have any spools on the bike currently, please take them off. I would like to point your attention here to this quadrant of the bike. Right here is a cable that is hooked up to your speed sensor. And the next step, we'll be lifting this bike on a padded stand. Have to make sure not to damage this area, so we have to go forward of that. And as I mentioned, we will need a padded stand so that we can not take up any of the lifting geometry on the swing arm and still manage to get the wheel up. All right, now I'll drop the cotter pin out of the nut that fastens the axle on. Once that is off, we'll be able to take the axle off and the wheel will come out. All right, once the axle's out, all these parts are free to come out. Oftentimes, in a race setting or at a track day, these just start falling out. When you try to put it all back together, you have all these moving components that aren't attached to anything. And uh, we should probably be shooting this in black and white with melancholy music and frustrated face, but I kind of figured I would spare you guys the PTSD. If you've done this before, you know you hate it. So, let's solve this problem. Let's get rid of these nuts off the end caps, remove the end caps, and now I will use our spring and our end cap. These end caps are the same left to right, so no worries there. You assemble it like this with the bigger end towards the end cap. Washer, nut, nut. You won't really adjust this till the very end when the wheel's back in. So let's get that back in there. We'll do the same on the other side of the bike. Now, the actual lifter parts are mirror image of each other. They are left and right. And you get the pockets and the logos and text to the outside. As you can see here, we have a slot and a hole for the forward location. We'll grab the two mounting screws that we've provided for you guys. We're gonna go with the forward mount first. And then we're gonna engage the threads on the rear. I'm just gonna have it finger tight for now. We wanna make sure that we get some engagement 
between the wheel axle and everything together before we fully lock these things down. But as you can see already, this axle receiver within the swing arm stays where you leave it, where you adjust it to. So let's say you adjust it to here and lock it down. It'll stay here. Even if you bump it, once this is locked down, it'll move around, but spring back to where it was. All right. I'm gonna get my axle partially through, get my brake carrier remounted, get all these components jiving together. Still loose, and that's why you see it a little sloppy. No big deal, we'll tighten it up. Let's attach our GP lifter to the left side of the bike. Okay, here I'd like to break and show you guys the nuance we have for a Ninja 300 Z300 bike. This is a swing arm from a Ninja 300. This happens to have a really, really large bolt hole here that doesn't fit with the same M8 fastener. So instead of remaking the entire assembly to have an M10 fastener here and accepting holes, we've provided a longer bolt that'll just clear straight through and then get fastened and tightened with a nut on the opposite side. So for the Ninja 300 and Z300, the only difference in your kit will be that you will have two fewer of the screws that go in this location, and then those will be replaced with this hardware for you to mount on that location. All right, let's continue. I have all my parts in position to start reassembly. Now we do have a tire wedge somewhere around here. I'm not a very big fan, but a lot of people say it's very helpful. I like to use my foot, but we do believe in Pitbull products. So we do carry them. If you don't like to use your foot like I do, and you like to have a wedge under here, we do have those for you guys to pick up along with all of these components I'm showing you. I'm gonna get my nut on the axle, get it snug down a little bit, but leave enough adjustability so I could still adjust all this stuff. At this point, I would like to start tightening down on these adjustment nuts. Chain adjustment is achieved exactly the same as per your bike's user manual. So I'm not gonna shoot a video on how to adjust the chain on a Ninja 400. You guys will have to look that up elsewhere. All right, now that I have some tension in this bolted connection on each side, it's actually helping to keep each end cap in the swing arm. I am now going to turn in these screws all the way. These are M8 fasteners. You can look up a torque spec if you'd like. I typically just get them fastened down like this. If you wanna look up the torque spec for that, it's steel on aluminum M8 thread. All looks good. I want to put the cotter pin back in on the ninjas. You have cotter pins on Yamaha's. You have Fuji nuts, which are a little bit nicer to use. All right. 
right, let's drop this bike off of this stand and check out our new lifting mechanism. All right, let's get this thing up on the stand. As you can see, this is quite a bit easier to locate than the reverse mechanism. The spools actually find the hook a little bit easier. So when you're trying to go fast in a pit situation, these will actually help you get that aim better and uh, get your bike stood up for whatever you may need to do. Put warmers on, change wheels, whatever. Um, I really believe that this is probably the most pit performance enhancement you could get on these bikes. It is so terribly frustrating to have to change the wheel with everything just falling out on you and trying to monkey it back together um, in the OEM configuration. These captive chain adjusters really do solve uh, that frustration for me. And I hope they'll do, for, do that for you. You can find these things at tstindustries.com. Come on down, check it out. We'll see you there.